I'm Coyote Peterson. Now you've seen me stung by harvester ants, fire ants, and scorpions. But today, I'm moving a rung up on the insect sting pain index, and I'm going to be stung by the cow killer. I have a feeling that this one is going to hurt. Oh boy. There's no question about it, the Wild West is rough and rugged. And whether you're talking about the rocky terrain, laced with spine-covered plants, or its animals, most of which are armed with fangs and stingers, Arizona's Sonoran Desert is an adventure lover's playground. Sure, we all have our fears of being bitten by a rattlesnake when venturing off trail. Or in my case, having a giant desert centipede run on my pant leg. But in actuality, the good news is that each and every one of these creatures does its best to avoid human interaction. However, sometimes you have an accidental run-in, and when you do, a bite or a sting can be incredibly painful. <sighs> yeah, he got me. He bit me. Are you sure? Yeah, he definitely bit me. When it comes to my line of work, the goal is to have an interaction so that I can show you the effects of these encounters. This way we can all learn why it's important to be in tune with our surroundings and why it's always best to admire animals from a safe distance. Bevel in, bevel in. Got one? Yeah, yeah, he's right there on the edge of that log. I get my back off. Yes, hold on, no, he's underneath the log. I just started to tip it, I so I ran back. Hold on a second. I'm so oh, I saw him. Did you see it? He ducked out, ducked back in. There it is, there it is. Get him, get him, Bill Ah! Yes! Yes! Look Woo! at that! Whoa! <laughs> oh, he almost got into the crevice of that log! Wow, that is a good size one, too. Uh, but we got our velvet ant. There it is. Okay, cool. Well, tomorrow morning, I'm gonna get stung by that little ornery bugger. Cool! The velvet ant, which is actually a species of ground wasp and not an ant at all, claims a famous nickname, the cow killer. Ranked on the insect sting pain index as being the fourth most painful sting in the insect kingdom, rumor has it that the pain is so intense it can kill a cow. You may be looking at this thinking to yourself, Coyote, are you going to get stung? Yeah. I am. I'm going to get stung by this today. Now the insect sting pain index says that the intense pain will last for about 30 minutes. Uh, and the reason that I'm doing it is to work my way up to the bullet ant. You want to see me stung by the bullet ant? Kind of feel like I have to get stung by everything else leading up to that. I am not looking forward to 30 minutes of pain that's going to come from this insect. I know, right? Here we go again. Coyote is about to enter the strike zone, but this one's a little different. When it comes to alligator bites, crab pinches, or blood-sucking leeches, I'm fine with that. When it comes to stingers and venom, that's where even I get nervous. Now, the females do not have wings. The males do have wings. But what's interesting is that the males do not have stingers. Guess who does have a stinger? That's right, the females. And that's what we have here today. Now, one of the most impressive things about this insect is the size of its stinger. In fact, it's about as long as the entire length of the abdomen. What I want to do now is use these little entomology forceps to pick the velvet ant up and show you guys just how big that stinger is. You ready for this? Yeah. Are they delicate? Um, they are not. The velvet ant actually has a very, very durable exoskeleton, one of the toughest exoskeletons in the insect kingdom. So me picking her up with the forceps is not going to cause her any sort of pain or damage. Come here. Oh. 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 Oh, get in the way, get in the way. I got it, I got it. Got it? Got it. Got it. Okay. Awesome. Now they can be found in the grass. So if you're out there walking around barefoot and you step on one of these, you're not gonna squish it. What's gonna happen is it's gonna spin around and then it's gonna tuck its abdomen under and boom, you're gonna get nailed with that giant stinger. Well, I think at this juncture, it is time for me to actually take a sting. Are you guys getting nervous? I'll tell you what, I sure was. Now they say that this sting is painful enough to kill a cow. 
However, there are no reported cases of cows, or humans for that matter, ever dying from a velvet ant sting. This makes me feel a bit better, but you never know how your body will react to venom, so we always have an epinephrine pen on location just in case I have an allergic reaction to the sting. All right, Mark's signaling me that it is time. Here we go. I'm about to be stung by the velvet ant. Here we go. All right, Coyote. Well, it's about that time. Yeah. How are we going to pull this off? I see we have a, you know, camera-wise, we have a GoPro, small camera right next to me. Oh, hey, there's Chance. Chance over there. What's the game plan for this sting in here? What's, what's the idea? Well, this is going to go down one of two ways. What I'm going to try first is to actually take this little glass, flip it upside down, get the ant to this end, and then place it down on top of my arm. This will isolate the ant on my skin, and I'm hoping that as it tries to get away, it's just going to sting me. Now, if that doesn't work, I also have my pair of entomology forceps, and I'm actually going to pick up, hold the ant, place it on my arm, and let it sting me. One way or another, I am definitely going to be stung by the velvet ant. <sighs> Here we go, okay. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is get the ant up into that part of the glass, and then I'm going to spin this over onto my forearm, and with any luck, the ant is going to sting me. Here we go, ready? Let's do it, here comes number four. I'm Coyote Peterson, and I'm about to enter the sting zone with the velvet ant. One, two, here we go, three. Oh boy, oh my heart's racing right now. Oh boy, I can see its abdomen kind of pumping. My heart is going now. Any second it could happen. Yeah, any second it could sting me. Oh boy, ooh, 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 ow, 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 ow. Oh, it's biting at my skin. It's biting at the edge of the container, trying to get out. Ooh. Oh, and that stinger is gonna be like a little hypodermic needle going into my skin. Oh, this is intense. The uh, glass is actually starting to get a little foggy from the heat of my skin. So at this point, I think we're going to move to plan B, which is holding the velvet ant with the entomology forceps. I don't think it's going to sting me at this point. It's been in there for about two minutes, and so far, no sting. It's just trying to get out. So I'm gonna flip my arm upside down and get the ant back under control. Okay, here we go, ready? Okay. One, two, three. Okay. Ah, How do you feel? Ah, extremely nervous and my heart is racing. I actually think I do have to take a second just to get my heart rate to calm back down. Okay, cut and go, pro. Okay. All right, the only way to actually move forward with this is for me to hold the ant with the entomology forceps up against my skin and let it sting me. This seems, this is gonna do it, isn't it? Yeah, hold on, I need a second. My heart's like, right. ooh, getting dizzy. Yeah, getting dizzy. In the world of entomology, when it comes to milking the venom of insects and arachnids, holding them with forceps is a guaranteed way to induce a sting. So I think we all know what's going to happen next. This is crazy, guys, this is crazy. Uh, my nerves are going this much for the velvet ant. I can't imagine what the uh, tarantula hawk and the bullet ant are going to be like. Okay. I can't, I can't believe you're about to do this. That stinger is enormous. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you can do this. You can do this. So okay. Is that stinger going to go all the way under your skin? Yeah, it's going to go right into my skin. Yeah, I'm ready. Oh, boy. Here we go, ready? All right, let's do this again one more time for good measure. I'm Coyote Peterson, and I'm about to enter the sting zone with the cow killer. Are you ready? Are you ready? No, I'm never ready. One, two, three. You good? Yeah. Get your shot, I'm gonna place it right down on my arm. Here we go. Look at my arm shaking. Go. Ah! 
Okay, let me get You're back right? here. You all right? What are you feeling? Go! Oh wow! Oh wow! Okay. G give me a second. Oh my gosh! You all right? Oh yeah. What are you feeling? What does it feel like? Give me a second. Give me a second. Oh my gosh, guys, this is super bad. Move this other way. Hold on, I gotta, gotta try to control my heart rate. Try to get a tight shot right there where the stinger when you just see the, there's blood. Okay, try to get a shot because I can get a like walk around for a second. Right there. Right there, it's our stomach. Our stomach. I could feel it. It was like um you could feel it go all the way under the skin. All the way in. I could feel it insert into my arm. Oh. <laughs> you gonna be alright? <laughs> okay. Now they say that the sting of the velvet ant will last for about 30 minutes. And I can tell you guys right now, this is the worst sting I've ever taken. There's no question about it. It's worse than a horror street ant, it's worse than a fire ant. It feels like I'm getting stung over and over again. You can see the welt starting to form on my arm. Oh, oh man, yeah, there's a welt big time. Describe the pain, is it, is it like, a pulsating pain, uh, stabbing pain? The pain, pain, it's radiating. It is radiating. It feels like, um, you know if you get a Charlie horse in your muscle and it like seizes up and then it's like, doof, doof. Oh, that is powerful. I can see why they call them cow killers. Uh, <laughs> oh, that is some intense pain right there. How long has it been? Uh, about seven minutes. Seven minutes. Now uh, they say this, the pain from this lasts for about 30. Uh, about 23 minutes to go, guys. 23 minutes to go. Ah! Now aside from working my way up to the bullet ant, the reason I was willing to take a sting from this insect was so that we could all see the effects of the venom. 25 minutes has gone by, uh, my arm is still on fire, and what's crazy is that, look at all the red blotching that's formed around the sting. There's the stinger insertion point right there, and it is swollen, and it is very tender, and you can see how red the entire radius is of the sting. I'm sweating. <sighs> My goal was to do the best I could to describe the pain I was feeling. And it, it still hurts. It definitely still hurts, but not as bad as the initial uh, impact of the stinger. But what's interesting is that all around the sting is tingling, like these little tiny pincushion needles going tss, 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 tss. And as you can see, there's all these little red dots forming, and I'm assuming that is where the venom is spreading into my arm. Oh wow, well I would say that this was definitely one very intense sting. The cow killer has earned its reputation as being one of the most powerful stings in the insect kingdom. <laughs> And while it may be ranked as a four on the insect sting pain index, for me, at this point, it's definitely number one. I'd say I'm one step closer to being stung by the bullet ant, but first, I'm gonna have to go up against the tarantula hawk. I have a feeling that that one is going to be bad. During the winter of 2020, the national media erupted with a deafening buzz that venomously stung an unwarranted fear into homes across America. That buzz came from none other than the giant hornet. Hailing as one of the most painfully toxic stings in the world, these nightmarish insects have a nasty reputation, and they were defined as murder hornets by the press. For anyone that is late to the party, yes, I have already been stung. Ah! And yes, ah! it hurts. A lot. Absolute searing pain! As for the invasion, no, we aren't going to be overrun, stung, and killed by giant hornets. 
but some may argue that the invasion has already happened. That's where I come in. It's time to set the record straight, and more importantly, it's time to take a misidentified scapegoat off of the suspect list. Okay, let's get down to business. You showed up to see a full-grown man experience some pain. But first, you gotta learn a little something about this incredible insect. As my mom always used to say, you can't have your dessert until you finish your vegetables. Well, if that's not a terrifying little insect, I don't know what is. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to the cicada killer one of the largest wasp species in the United States. This is only second to the tarantula hawk. Now, this wasp is not technically a spider wasp like the tarantula hawk. This is in fact a sand wasp. Now, similar to the tarantula hawk, they have a very unique biological cycle. This one that you're looking at right here is a female. It is the females that get larger than the males and the females that are armed with a venomous stinger. And what the females will do is search around in the treetops for cicadas. They will hone in on their target, move in and use that elongated abdomen to swoop up underneath their prey and then sting it. They paralyze the cicada, similar in the way that a tarantula hawk paralyzes a spider. Eventually the male cicada killers fertilize the egg that she lays on top of the paralyzed cicada. The female will physically carry that cicada cicada in its large mandibles and its grappling hook-like legs back to its underground burrow. These burrows can be up to 20 inches in length and they have multiple tunnels. At the end of each one of these tunnels, the female will place the paralyzed cicada. Once that egg hatches, it turns into a pupa and begins to feast upon that paralyzed insect until it grows large enough to build a cocoon and then once it hatches out of that cocoon the next season, another cicada killer comes up from under the ground. If that's not a true horror story, I don't know what is. Now, this is a very large wasp, and the easiest way to identify it are those large amber-colored wings. When this creature is at rest, like it is right now, the wings have a very triangular shape to them, very different looking from a hornet or a spider wasp. You'll see there, when she folds her wings back, it looks a little more concave, similar to a giant hornet, which makes it really easy to misidentify this species as that foreign invader. And when you look at the front of the insect, it has enormous eyes. These wasps have incredible eyesight. They're primarily diurnal, and you'll see them very active on overcast, cloudy days. Again, they're using their senses to find the cicadas up in the tree, target in on their prey, and then they will make a move. Now, that thorax is rather sizable, very robust, but it's the abdomen that is the most unique. That black and yellow coloration tells you that this creature is venomous. Aposomatic means, leave me alone, I am not something you want to be stung by. Now when it comes to the demeanor of this wasp, to be honest, they're rather docile, and very seldomly will they ever interact with humans. In fact, the only time you stand the chance of being stung by this insect is if you were to step on top of its burrow and it were to come up from underneath you and try to escape. It would maybe sting your bare foot if you were blocking its escape way. Other than that, this is not a bug that is ever gonna go out of its way to try to interact with humans. Now, during the summertime, you will oftentimes see clusters of the males battling it out up in the air, but other than that, these are considered solitary sand wasps. And no matter how you break it down, guys, to be honest, this is one very intimidating insect, which makes it very clear as to why people are afraid of this wasp. Wow, seeing it buzz around inside that capsule brings a number of flashbacks. The warrior wasp, the tarantula hawk, the executioner wasp, and certainly the Japanese giant hornet. But there is a very good reason as to why I'm going to be stung by this wasp today. No, I am not technically coming back out of sting retirement. This is going to be a one and only, because right now this insect has a very negative reputation. By people misidentifying it for the giant hornet, they're panicking and they're aiming to kill this species. But it is not something that we need to be afraid of. So, by getting this up close for the cameras and by taking a sting, I can show you guys that that sting is not really that potent. Remember, it only ranks as a two on the insect sting pain index. Now that stinger is of course a modified oviposter, which is used for 
depositing eggs. And while it is laced with venom, the venom of this species is not necessarily that potent. However, I do not know how my body is going to react to the sting. So we certainly have an epinephrine pen on set just in case my body has an allergic reaction. But if you guys are ready, I think it is time to transfer the cicada killer from the capsule into the net. Let's get in the forceps and get me stung. This is the most delicate part, so I've got to really stay focused and make sure to get a clean, secure hold. Just, just like that, we almost lost it. Man, that is a very, very, very powerful, very powerful wasp. Oh, buddy. Okay, let me try this again. I mean, you have to think about it. This thing is capable of carrying a cicada that can weigh more than it does. It is a very, very powerful wasp. <sighs> I also have to be very delicate and very gentle. I don't want to damage the insect's wings in any way whatsoever. She's got all these little hairs on her, which makes her very slippery. That's where I'm struggling. I need to get it right. Right like that. And I got a good hold. We gotta go with it now. Okay, you guys in position? Okay, hands shaking. I'm Coyote Peterson, and I'm about to be stung by the cicada killer. Oh my goodness, that stinger is long. Here we go. One, two, three. It's the first time I've ever lost one. I must be rusty. Oh, uh, it got me more than once too. Woo! Uh, were you able to see that? Were you able to see the sting? I think so. Come in tight right there. Woo! Long stinger. Oh yeah, it's throbbing. Wow. Okay. Really not that bad. Really not that bad at all. It got me there and there. Oh yeah, okay, okay, here we go. Second rush of pain, second rush of pain. Uh, nowhere near a velvet ant or tarantula hawk. Nothing close to bullet ant or some of those larger wasps. Wow, for such a long stinger. Very intimidating. Really? Not that painful. It got good stings. Oh yeah, skin is definitely tightening up. <sighs> Common paper wasp at the most. Not even on par with a honeybee. Not even on par with a honeybee. I can't believe it. <sighs> My first miss on the capsule. Well, it's certainly back into the wild at this point. Without question, the strongest insect I have ever worked with in one of these sting scenarios. Now here's my theory. For a spider wasp like the tarantula hawk to go up against something like a tarantula, that's an aggressive predator onto its own with big fangs. So your sting and your venom has to be insanely potent. I don't feel any sense of paralysis in my arm. When it comes to a wasp like the cicada killer, when you're going against a cicada with no stinging or biting parts, I can see why your sting doesn't need to be so potent. Now, a couple minutes have gone by, and if you come over here and you zoom in on my arm, Mario, you can see something funky's happening on my forearm. Look at that welt. I thought I only got stung twice, but I'm seeing swelling here and radiating out now into my forearm. Now, I do feel burning after the fact but nothing more than a common wasp sting. There is an initial jolt. 
sort of like an electrical shock. And I was anticipating the paralysis of the tarantula hawk, but that pain went and then it just kind of died off. Wow. Now what that leads me to conclude is that while this may be a very intimidating wasp that is going to be confused for the giant hornet, it is definitely not something we need to be afraid of. I would say that the sting is no more than a two on the insect sting pain index. An even 10 year old coyote could have likely taken a sting from this creature and gone right on in the swamps catching turtles. Now when it comes to seeing one of these wasps this summer, if you come across it in your backyard, remember, this is not a creature that is out to get you. They want nothing to do with humans, and unless you're a cicada, you have absolutely nothing to fear. There are moments we have brought you on the Brave Wilderness Channel that the world will never forget. Ah! Ah! Oh, it's stuck in my arm! It's stuck in my arm! Ah! Then there are the moments that we know the world is waiting for. I'm Coyote Peterson, and I'm about to enter the sting zone with the Executioner Wasp. Here we go. But before we get there, first, I must face one more horrific sting. Ah! The Tatori Prefecture is one of the most remote stretches of wilderness in all of Japan and mysteriously hidden deep within its fog-covered mountains, a world of giants stalk this ancient landscape. For days we searched in every place possible, yet much to our chagrin, it seemed as if an encounter with Japan's most notorious insect would elude us. Then on our second to last day in country, when it seemed as if all hope was lost, the very encounter I had been searching for presented itself in the form of a giant hornet. Hornet, 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 right there, right there, right there, right in the edge of that leaf. Look at that, it's huge. Right there, right there, right there. Got it, hornet, hornet, giant hornet, 100%. You got one? Yes, 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 hold on a second. Yes, right there, right there, right there. Dude, you got it. Got it. Hold on, I'm gonna put the scope. Wow, down. that is a big hornet. Where is it? Where is it? Hold on. It's right here. It's right, right here. Right there. Right there. Right there. Wow. Let me trap it up against Close the front of the net. It. Where is it? It's tangled up with Mario. All look these at plants. that. Where, where, where? Look, look, look. It's biting right through the net. You can barely see it. Here, let's do this. I gotta get it in the capsule. Let's yeah. get it in the capsule. Hold on a second. Here. Uh, do you need help? Hold the end of that. Hold the end of that. <laughs> Yeah, you guys will be able to see a lot better if I get it into here. Hold on a second. I want to get stung through the net. Okay. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. Almost got it. You're sure it's a giant? I'm 100% certain, dude. It's huge. There's no way this is anything else. Look at it. It's biting onto the net. I'll probably chew right through there if it could. Well, it's stung yet. <laughs> got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Let's see the look at it. Ooh, ooh. That is it. Yep. You got one. <sighs> Man. How about that, Man. right? Oh my goodness, look at how big it is. My hand is shaking. How'd you find it? It was just on top of the plants. I saw it was about ready to take off and I was like, oh, I don't know if I got the shot on the GoPro. Just dropped it into the dirt. I just had to make sure that I got it. I swiped down right on top of those plants, got the plants and got the hornet at the same time. It is huge. Wow. I guess that's why they call it the giant hornet. Man, okay, well, we're starting to lose light, but we definitely still have time to get this scene. Let's hike back up this way, find a flat spot. Yes, we have got the Japanese giant hornet. Man, oh yeah. There it is, the Japanese giant hornet. And I would say the giant is an understatement. Not since the tarantula hawk have we encountered a more intimidating insect. Look at that beast. From its head to its thorax, down its legs which end in grappling hooked feet, and then of course that enormous pulsating abdomen. Everything about this creature screams, run in the other direction, yet here we are 
on the doorstep of the executioner wasp. And what we're gonna find out today is just how painful the sting of this hornet really is. Now on the insect sting pain index, it only ranks as a two. Can you believe that? On a scale of one to four, this is only a two. Maybe its bark is bigger than its bite, or in this case, I should say its sting. Today, I'm going to be stung by the largest hornet in the world. All right, what we're gonna do now is get a couple of really cool B-roll shots. I'm gonna walk around, address the coyote pack, and then we're gonna enter the sting zone. I am nervous. The Japanese giant hornet is considered to be one of the largest stinging insects in the world. This nightmarish creature is armed with a 6.25 millimeter stinger, and it injects a venom known as Mandera toxin in a high dosage that can destroy tissue and attack the nervous system of its victim. And while a single sting is not likely to be deadly, over 30 people die every year in Japan from taking multiple stings. In most cases, these deaths come as a result of anaphylactic shock. But no matter how you break it down, this sting is incredibly dangerous. That is a big hornet. That is a huge hornet, the biggest hornet on the face of the planet. And I have a feeling that the sting is going to be intense. Now it's rumored that the sting of this insect can kill you. Guys, a single sting is not going to kill me unless I go into anaphylactic shock. Now, if you were to be swarmed by 30 or 40 of these and be stung repetitively, yes, there is a good chance you will die. Now, I've also heard that the venom is going to cook a hole in my arm. <sighs> not exactly looking forward to that, but it all depends how my body reacts to the venom. Everybody reacts differently. You guys have to remember that. So, <sighs> I'm gonna go through with this. I know a lot of you are probably running to the comment section right now saying, Coyote, you don't have to do this. You don't have to do this. I do have to do this. We have climbed the insect sting pain index, and this is the only one, guys, the only one that I think we just have to find out how bad that sting is. It's so big. It's such a dominant character throughout all of Japanese culture, and certainly when it comes to the insect sting pain index, I don't think we can leave this stone unturned. So if you guys are ready, I think the crew is ready. It is time to enter the sting zone with the Japanese giant hornet. Here we go. Warning, never attempt to recreate the following scene as a sting from the giant hornet has the potential to be lethal. All right, guys, this is it. The moment that you all showed up for. Now, before we go through with the sting, first let's talk a little bit about the safety. We do have an epinephrine pen with us. Now, a single sting from this hornet should not kill me. However, like most stings, you can go into anaphylactic shock. It just depends how your body reacts to the venom. I should be just fine. I will experience some pain, discomfort, potentially some pretty extreme swelling, but I shouldn't die from a single sting. I do have my entomology forceps with me. What we're gonna do is get the insect into the net and then I'm gonna get it under control. Same way we've done all the sting videos in the past. Are you guys ready? Sounds good. Are you ready to do this? Here we go. All right. All right, net coming up. Uh, this is probably one of the most risky bits. We do not want to lose the hornet and I do not want to get stung too early. Okay, I'm going to gently stand up here, put the basin of the capsule at the bottom of the net. All right, and Hornet is going live inside the net. Let me get the platform out. Here we go. Platform is out of the net. And come on, guy. Don't you go. All right, Hornet is out of the capsule. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna keep the capsule close. You guys know the goal is to always get the capsule back on top of the insect before it flies away. I'll place that there for just a second. And now it gets intense. I have to figure out the best way to pick up this giant. I wanna grab right onto the back of its thorax behind the wings so I have full control. All right, you guys got a good shot? 
All right, I'm gonna slightly have to maneuver myself just a little bit here. Ooh, it is not happy. This is one angry hornet. Hold on, hold on. Gotta get it to turn. Oh, it's turning. Hold on a second. My hand is shaking. Ah, control your nerves, coyote. Control your nerves. My heart is racing a million miles a second, and I can't keep my hand still to grab onto the inside. Hold on. Ah, the, the hornet is actually biting onto the forceps. Actually, I'm going to pin it like this. Okay, I've got it. I've got it. Perfect hold. That's what we want. Wow. All right. Everyone just take a moment to soak this in. That is an enormous hornet. Look at its abdomen pulsating. And you look at the mandibles, those are used for chomping. I think I may also take a bite during this video as well, which I'm kind of afraid of. And if you zoom in on the legs, you can see that they have these little hooks. They almost look like grappling hooks. And one thing that also scares me, there is the chance it's gonna latch onto my arm and sting more than once. I can't stop my hand from shaking. I haven't been this nervous since the tarantula hawk. Sure you wanna do this? Yeah, there's no turning back now. All right, you guys ready? Ready if you are. I'm Coyote Peterson, and I'm about to enter the sting zone with the Japanese giant hornet. One, two, here we go, three. Oh, this thing just stuck in my arm. Oh! That is it. Oh man, wave of dizziness really quick. Ah! Oh! oh, searing pain. Absolute searing pain. There's where the stinger went in right there. Did you not see how slow the sting was? Oh! I see blood. Ah! Oh my gosh. Ah! Ah! Oh my gosh. I know it's tough to describe it. You gotta describe it for me. Okay, 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 okay. My hand is completely seized up and locked in place. This is like the tarantula hawk. Look at the swelling that's beginning to form on my arm. Forearm is incredibly tall. Only about 45 seconds have gone by. Careful not to go uh, on the cliff edge, by the way. Let's, let's, let's move it over there. Back up, over here. Back, back, up, up, back, back up, back up, back up. Ah! You gotta tell us if you're in trouble. Are you gonna be okay? When? The stinger went into my arm. I had this like wave, like a wave came over me and I got super dizzy, almost didn't feel what was happening. And then the, the pain just was like immediate, immediately searing. Oh, look at your gosh. arm. Oh my gosh, look at that. Look at that. Wow, you are swelling like crazy. He's swelling up bad. Hang on a second. Let's let's put a circle around where the swelling's yeah, at to see the you... progression of it. Ah! This is the outer, and then that is the immediate right there. Ah! Oh man! Ah! Not a two. Far surpasses the tarantula hawk. Far surpasses the tarantula hawk. Ah! Here, 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 look at this. If I turn my arm sideways, look at the welt on my, oh, 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 okay. Can't touch near it. Sharp shooting pain if I touch near it. Wow. Oh my gosh. I can see <clears throat> that your wrist is starting to swell. Do you want to take your watch off? Ah. You know? I got it, I got it, I got it. Ah. Yeah. That's ah. <sighs> no relief yet. It's just a matter of harnessing the pain, controlling the level of pain, and rolling around on the ground and screaming at this point really isn't doing me any good. All right, let's cut cameras and come back in about five minutes. Let me get a drink of water. All right, man. Well, I could definitely see that- Don't touch it. I'm not, I'm not gonna touch it. I just wanna show everyone at home. The swelling has completely gone outside of these initial marks. I mean, and I don't think you're out of the woods yet. I think that's gonna swell a whole lot worse. 
Yeah, we are only 20 minutes in at this point. 20 minutes since that stinger went deep into my forearm. You can see the discoloration in my skin there, the massive goose egg that has formed. The venom has worked its way up my arm. Can you show us the lump? Can you hold your arm up at all? <sighs> oh my goodness. <sighs> wow. I'm sure you guys want to know how this feels as compared to some of the other top insects on the sting index. It blows the cow killer out of the water, no comparison. It definitely trumps the tarantula hawk. When we're talking bullet ant, I would definitely say that at this point it is on par. And in just one month, the episode you have all been waiting for, the sting of the executioner wasp will determine who the true king of sting really is. We're gonna monitor this sting for the next 24 hours and see what happens. Well, I can promise you this much, I've got a world of pain ahead of me for the next few hours. The Insect Sting Pain Index needs no new introduction in relation to the work that we do. And my climb toward its summit began with a small creature known as the harvester ant. This experiment into what happens from an onslaught of stings opened the door to a world of pain that I would attempt to endure in the name of education and science. Ah, that was one on my neck. Mario, get the one off my neck. If you were watching this video, there's a good chance you remember the velvet ant. Also known as a cow killer, this wingless wasp is famous for having the largest stinger in the insect kingdom. A sting from that creature was intense, but it didn't end there. This is the worst sting I've ever taken. Oh my gosh, guys, this is super bad. The tarantula hawk delivered as promised, with a tidal wave of pain that literally put my arm into a state of paralysis. John, get with my arm! And finally came the moment that the world had been waiting for one and only bullet ant. Ranked as having the most painful sting in the insect kingdom, it seemed as if I had conquered the sting pain index mountain. Oh, the stinger stuck in my arm, look at that! I had reached the summit. I had done it. Or had I? Whispers began to drift amongst the YouTube comment section, and questions began to arise as to whether or not the bullet ant was truly the king of sting. Oh, it's burning more! It's getting worse! Hold on, hold on, hold on! These whispers turned into a haunting echo. What about the warrior wasp? Coyote, have you heard about the warrior wasp? Are you going to be stung by the warrior wasp? Warrior wasp, warrior wasp, warrior wasp! That is an enormous nest of angry warrior wasps. Man, a lot higher up there than I thought. This is gonna definitely be tough. Let me look again, double check. Yep, those are warrior wasps, 100%. And that nest is so big, there are probably thousands of them in there, all inside the walls. All it takes is a little disturbance for them to literally spill out and swarm like mad. And they're incredibly fast, much faster than your typical paper wasp. The local expert that tipped us off to this field where he said, yeah, I've seen warrior wasps there before, actually at one point threw a rock through a nest and I was told that they spilled out of the nest so fast, he barely even had time to think about running, let alone making an escape to try to get to his vehicle. And in the process, he was stung multiple times and had to go to the hospital. We do know they are incredibly fast and incredibly aggressive. So for Mark and Mario, we're gonna actually set up a mosquito net here underneath the overhang of this tree. Now that will hopefully keep you guys safe and out of the sting zone, because as we know, the sting zone goal with this is simply on my forearm, not all over our bodies. I'm gonna be wearing a bee suit, so hopefully that will protect me as I go in to extract one of these ornery little insects. And with any luck, we're gonna get one up close for the cameras. Known as one of the most aggressive paper wasp species in the world, these beautiful insects carry the warrior moniker from their commitment to attacking anything that disturbs their nest. However, very few people have ever been stung by one of these insects because unlike normal paper wasp species, they often build their massive nests high up in the trees of the central and South American rainforests, a place where humans virtually never encounter them. 
Let's go catch a warrior wasp. All right, guys, I think I'm ready. Let's get you tucked underneath the uh, net here. Now, in the event that I am swarmed, it is best for you guys to just stay completely put and underneath this. Wrap yourselves up as tight as you can. There's a good chance they're not gonna get through there. It's a mosquito net, so all the webbing is very tightly wound. Yeah. So nothing can really get through this, but still, it's gonna be a pretty nerve wracking experience if this thing gets swarmed by the most painful stinging wasp in the world. All right. Are you guys ready? Ready. All right, guys, I am now going to slowly approach the nest. And the goal is going to be to just hold the net up in the air and see if I can get wasps to actually come to the net. If I am swarmed, it is gonna be one incredibly bad situation. I'm very close now. We're all down on the low end. Whoa, starting to swarm around me. There are a couple moving around me left and right. My tactic was simple. Coax a single wasp from the nest using my extendable GoPro arm, and then quickly swipe it up using my entomology net. This was primed to be one of the most dangerous animal catches I had ever attempted, as disturbing the nest could literally mean thousands of these fearless warriors swarming me and the crew. Okay, I'm going to cut this handheld camera and go for a catch. Here we go. Definitely got one, a big one too. Woo! Holy cow, that totally works. Okay, there it is, right there in the net, you see it? Yeah. And what I did is I just provoked one off the edge with the aquapod and got it right into the net. Check that out. Wow, okay, now this is the difficult part. I need to safely get it out of the net and into the capsule, give me one second here. Oh man, my arm is shaking. That, that was the most perfect swipe I could have possibly attempted. Nothing got scared, it was wasp on the edge of the net. I just poked it with the aquapod, it came off. One swipe, and I had it. Hold on a second. Yes, there it is. Wow, there you have it. That is the warrior wasp. Oh my gosh, that is a large wasp. Wow. Uh, I was excited to catch it, and now I realize I have just sealed my fate. That is crazy. Whew, look at the abdomen on that creature. Well, part one of this mission is in the capsule. Part two is to get me stung. Ah, I have a feeling this may be just as bad as the bullet. Just based on the knowledge that these are extremely aggressive, I have a feeling that the sting is going to be unbelievably painful, but I am mentally prepared to take this sting. And I know that this is the moment that everybody's been waiting for. We thought that I had climbed the insect sting pain index and reached the summit, and that was it. The bullet ant was it. But of course, we all knew that we teased the warrior wasp at the end of that episode. And ever since, you guys have been asking for it. So today, Coyote Peterson, is going to deliver. Here we go. There it is. That is a warrior wasp. Now the ultimate question that we are answering today is, will the warrior wasp's sting be more painful than the bullet ant. Oh, I have to just sit back for a second 
and admire this creature. How can something only that big, about an inch in length, possibly contain such a potent sting? Look at that iridescent blue coloration on the wings, and its abdomen almost looks as if it's covered in velvet. You'll notice the body structure of this wasp is very distinct. Of course, it has the head, it has a thorax, and then a very, very narrow space between its thorax and its abdomen. Now, one thing that I did notice when we saw these out flying around the nest is when they fly, they actually turn their abdomens upwards to a point in the air, very different looking than other wasp species that we see flying around. Now, what's interesting is that this thing looks like a warrior, and when all of them are together and they're on the outside of the hive, what they will do to ward off anything that's thinking about getting into the hive is they will go boom, 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 boom and sometimes they are actually called drumming wasps because they beat their wings together all in unison and that's where they get the name worry wasp. It sounds like soldiers marching. So when I look at this creature and its fierce appearance, it definitely reminds me of one determined warrior. And you know, the other thing that's real interesting about these wasps is they have massive front mandibles. Now, this is a species that will kill caterpillars and bring them back to feed their young, but they mostly feed on nectars and sugars. So this is not a creature that's out there hunting for itself, only hunting for its young, but those front mandibles I could easily see would be used to decapitate or kill something like a caterpillar or a grub. Whoa, it's an intimidating face on that creature. Almost looks like the face of the bullet ant, uh, but of course it has wings and uh, a slightly different body structure. This is the only time I have ever seen a blue wasp. Look at that. Now, just like we did with the tarantula hawk, the way to get this animal to sting me is we're gonna actually place the glass capsule inside of this net. And I'm gonna take off the glass top, let the net fall down on top of the insect, and I'm going to pick it up with these entomology forceps. I think you guys all know the game plan from there. Coyote's arm goes down on the table, the insect touches my forearm, and a sting is induced. Now, of course, for safety, we always have an epinephrine pen on set, just in case anybody's wondering. I'm gonna just place this off to the side at this point. And if you guys are ready, let's get the warrior wasp into the net. Mark, are you all set? I'm all set. What happens if the wasp gets aggressive and flies at us? Ooh, that's a great question, because I will tell you what, this is one fast insect. Now, when I am stung, as always, I'm gonna try to get the glass capsule back over top. If I do not, and the wasp flies off, just hold your ground for a second. Good chances, it just wants to escape, and it's not gonna come after you guys. But if you are stung, I'm pretty much just gonna turn the cameras around and film you guys to see what happens. <laughs> Oh, uh, let's not do that today. Let's hope that doesn't happen. Well, so far I've managed to get every one of these stinging insects back inside the glass capsule so that we can safely release it back into the wild right where it came from. And with any luck, we'll be able to pull that off again once more today. Let's keep that streak alive, please. Yes, yes. For you guys' sake, let's definitely keep it alive. Mario, are you ready? Ready. Mark, are you ready? I'm ready, if you're ready. All right, I am going to slide the warrior wasp off to the side. You stay there, buddy. And I'm going to place the net right in the middle of the table. Now, just like I did with the tarantula hawk, I'm then going to replace the capsule right there. And I'm going to lift up the net. See that? Good, you guys got that shot? Yep. I'm now going to remove glass capsule and let the wasp it's a little delicate procedure oh okay the wasp is in the net I want to gently pin it and I need to grab it right at the back of its thorax got it perfect hold yes okay wow there we have it okay I'm gonna have to do this quick and that is about as good a hold as I am going to get. Oh, I just need a stinger. Whoa, look at that stinger. I'm Coyote Peterson, and I'm about to enter the sting zone with the warrior wasp. Here we go. One, two. Oh man! Oh man, yep! 
so far. Not as bad as the bullet ant, though. Ugh. Nope, 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 hold on. Ah! Ugh, sharp shooting pain. There's the sting zone right there. See that? Oh my gosh, man, my arm is swelling up really, really quickly. Ugh. Hold on, back to the table, back to the table. Okay, so what is happening right now is the venom is getting into my bloodstream, right? And what's happening is it is breaking down the membranes around my blood cells and it's causing them to scatter. Now there are cells in there that are neurons, right? Those neurons are sending messages to my brain that are screaming pain, pain, pain. And trust me when I say there's massive amounts of pain going through my arm right now. Mm. The initial onset is not as bad as the bullet ant, but it's an electrical shock similar to that of the tarantula hawk. <sighs> Hold on, let me compose myself here for a second. Uh, 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 oh my gosh, the pain is actually getting worse as time goes on. And I don't know if that's actually the venom taking hold or that's just the neurons firing to my brain saying, you are in a lot of pain right now, Coyote. Hold on guys, give me a second. Uh, can you see the red? Seem more squirmy. Uh, like you can't sit still. This is this is more of a continuous sting than the bullet ant was. This is this is this keeps firing. This just keeps firing. Cut this GoPro. Uh. lightheaded you know you when you get into a really hot shower and the steam sets on you feel like you're gonna faint I do feel like I'm getting close to fainting and that is not good I'm just trying to control my breathing ah look at that welt man yeah, you can definitely that thing it. walloped me I can only imagine what it would be like to be swarmed by these just a single sting dwarfs the sting of a yellow jacket. The initial sting was not as painful as the tarantula hawk, but then it set in and it was electrical in nature. It felt like an electrical current going into my arm. And I, you know, I was over here, I was hitting the ground saying, it's not as bad as the bullet ant, but in its own way, it's different because the bullet ant hit me and then just kept radiating. This feels like I'm being stung over and over and over. It's really swell. It usually don't swell that quickly. Look at that. Go ahead, uh, put your hand out. Feel the tautness of my forearm. Oh yeah. And you can see. Oh yeah, big time. Stinger insertion point is definitely swollen. It is very much isolated. It almost looks like a little BB or something underneath my skin. Like a, that's, you know, you're reacting more like you did with the bees with that the immediate welt. You know, my body may start to react differently to venoms. At this point, I'm just feeling really lightheaded, very hot, my arm is very hot, and not necessarily like a state of paralysis like the tarantula hawk, but my- Any tightness in your chest or? Not my chest, tightness in my hand. Like this motion, squeezing of my hand is very, very difficult right now. Really having a hard time squeezing down a fist. You can see the swelling setting in there. It does still feel like pins and needles in my arm, but I know that everybody wants me to answer the question. Is the sting from the warrior wasp more painful than the bullet ant? I would definitely say that the bullet ant is worse. However, keep this in mind. If you come across a bullet ant while you're out there venturing through the rainforest of Costa Rica, let's say one lands on your arm, falls out of a tree and stings you, you can easily brush it off. However, if you stumble upon a nest of warrior wasps and you disturb it, 
you're going to have thousands of angry insects attacking you. And not only are they going to be attacking, but they are going to be chasing as you run through the underbrush. Now, I imagine if you were to take sting after sting after sting, it could potentially be lethal. So word to the wise, if you're out there in the rainforest of Costa Rica, simply admire these animals from a safe distance and always pay attention to your surroundings. All right, guys, right now we are on location in West Virginia and this big glorious bush behind me is known as a lilac. It's not currently in bloom, but its bark and its sap are incredibly valuable to a number of different wasp species, including hornets. And we have seen a very large hornet this morning. Is it possible that there are giant hornets in West Virginia? I'm gonna catch one and we're gonna find out. So Mario, what is it that we know about Hornets. Well, we know that they're actually a type of wasp. In fact, all hornets are wasps, but not all wasps are hornets. Oh, there's one. There's one flying around up there. Impossible to see on this small camera, but boy, are they big. So what they're doing right now is actually stripping the bark so that they can take it, chew it up, and build the walls of their paper nests. Oh, there's one, there's one, there's one. Man, they are all over these lilac bushes. They're higher up though. Oh man, here's one right here out in the sun on this branch. See it right here? Oh. Oh, I missed it. Oh, now they're angry. Hold on, don't move. Oh, that really made them angry. Coming right at you, look out. There's one, there's one. Here, take this, take this, take this. Moving up through the branches right now. I got it, I got it, I got it, got it, I got it, I got it. Yes! Oh, I thought I missed it, I've got it. Check that out. Wow, that's a big hornet. Yes! Here, let me give you this. Okay, we have got what may be West Virginia's giant hornet, but is it an invader? Okay, let me see if I can get it inside the bug capsule here. Yes, look at that beast. Ho, 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 ho. That is a very, very intimidating insect right there. All right, let's get this bug up into a controlled setting, properly identify and determine, is this an invasive murder hornet here in West Virginia? <sighs> here we are again. Coyote Peterson sitting at a table with an EpiPen, a pair of entomology forceps, and a stinging insect inside of a container. It's a big bug, there's no question about it. It's a hornet, but the question is, is that an invasive murder hornet? Now in 2020, the giant hornet was supposedly invading the United States. I've been very vocal in saying that this is not likely to happen. And recently we also showed you another large flying stinging insect here in the United States, the cicada killer. That species is a sand wasp and they're famous for killing cicadas, not humans. This right here is not a cicada killer. In fact, it is a true hornet, a very large hornet. Now there are a number of different hornet species here in the United States, and like Mario said earlier, all hornets are technically wasps, but not all wasps are hornets. Now if you were to go out into your backyard and see one of these things flying around, it sounds like an Apache helicopter. And I guarantee you're probably gonna be thinking to yourself, oh my gosh, I saw the news stories, or I saw in Brave Wilderness that you, this is what a murder hornet is. It's gotta be a murder hornet. Guys, it's not a murder hornet. It is a big hornet. In fact, the largest hornet in the United States, known as the European hornet. Now what's unique about this hornet species specifically is that it's one of the species that builds its paper nest above ground. Oftentimes true hornets build their nests underground, but this one will collect the sticky sap from different trees, rip off pieces of bark, chew it up in its mandibles, and take it back to its paper nest to continue building that structure. Now, if you come across one of these nests, you do not want to try and destroy it. Don't spray it with spray. Don't try to light it on fire, because if these insects recognize that their home is being disturbed, they will attack, and they will attack with force. So what I want to do now is get this insect out of the plastic container and take a look at some of its more unique features. To do that, I'm gonna have to get it in the net and pick it up with the forceps. I'm gonna give it a little space on the back side there. Perfect. Now it's 
down into the lower section and I can do this, which will cause it to walk up and into the net. Go up, go up, there we go. Plastic container comes down, boom. Insect is secured. Look at that, worked like a charm. Get these forceps. Gonna be real careful to get the bug right on its thorax so that I don't injure its wings. Good hold right there. That is the European Hornet. Perfect hold right on the thorax, and boy, you can see that stinger going. Definitely not an insect that you would want to be stung by. Well, let's take a look at some of the coolest anatomical features of this Hornet. It has a very robust body structure, and its exoskeleton is incredibly strong, so I'm not causing any injury to the bug as I hold it inside of these entomology forceps. Now, the head is massive, big eyes. These creatures have great eyesight, especially during the day. You'll notice those mandibles up front are very intimidating, capable of grasping and holding onto the prey items that they bring back to their brood of larvae. As you look at the legs, they almost appear as if they have grappling hooks on the ends of them. That allows them to pick up things like grasshoppers and cicadas to carry them back to their nests. Also allows them to easily grip onto the branches as they're crawling around in trees, eating up sap and stripping bark. Now look at that abdomen. If you look really closely, you can see it's covered in a bunch of fine little hairs. And look at the way that it pulses. That's pretty intimidating. That black and yellow coloration basically is a warning that I am venomous. You don't want to get stung by me. And this is actually a female. Remember, it's only the females that have stingers. That is a modified oviposter used for laying eggs. Now the sting of a hornet like this is definitely gonna be painful. It ranks as a two on the insect sting pain index. And it would be a multitude of stings that you would really need to worry about. A single sting is not likely to do you much damage, but this is not necessarily an insect you need to be afraid of. Remember, they are not going to attack you and sting unless you intentionally disturb a nest. And the nests are very obvious. They're very big, light gray in coloration, looks like a big paper mache art structure. So if you leave the nest be, your chances of interacting negatively with one of these hornets or a bunch of these hornets is very unlikely. Admire it from a safe distance and it's actually a pretty cool sight. All right, now I know you guys are all excited. You're thinking, all right, Coyote's got the insect in the entomology forceps. He's gonna stretch his arm out on the table, place it down on his forearm and induce a sting. I told you guys, after the cicada killer, I was done with stings. I came out of retirement for one and only. That was the cicada killer. The European Hornet, I am not going to be stung by. So I'm sorry to disappoint all of you that clicked on this video to see me stung by this Hornet. The purpose in catching it was to show you just how big and how cool it was and to also prove that this is not an invasive giant Hornet. This is not the murder Hornet that you guys have been reading about in the media. You can't believe the hype. In fact, humans have been living alongside stinging insects since the dawn of mankind. These creatures do not want to sting us unless we try to interact with them or destroy their homes. Now, the last thing I'm gonna do to prove that this insect does not want to sting me is to actually place it into the palm of my hand and let it fly off back into the ecosystem. I'm Coyote Peterson, be brave, stay wild. We'll see you on the next location. It often seems as if there are countless stinging insect species on the planet. And I know the Coyote Pack would love another run at me finding something that packs a more painful punch than the Executioner Wasp. Nothing is impossible, but for now, as promised at the end of our recent Cicada Killer episode, I will remain in sting retirement. But as you may have noticed, I haven't taken beastly bites off the table for consideration. Stay tuned, things are about to get crazy. Oh.